How's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Pickups and DylanTalksTone.com. This is the podcast where we discuss everything guitar tone. From the pick, to the guitar, to the cable, to the amp, pedals, anything. To the air in the room, it doesn't matter. If it has something to do with guitar tone, that's what we talk about. Um, trying to understand the myths and the legends and also try to figure out what really makes all this stuff go and what makes us sound better you know so this week um we kind of have a a few little questions that were actually um i really appreciate all the viewers on youtube and all the viewers on itunes or the listeners on itunes because y'all have been sending in questions or even just commenting on the video on youtube i do go back and look um sometimes it it, I have to go back and scroll through and, and find them, but I really do try uh, to get as many of these questions from you as I possibly can. This is not content that I'm making up as I go along. Uh, it's stuff that you are actually providing for us to talk about. So that's really, really fun. So there's a few questions that came in over YouTube uh, this over the last couple of weeks that I don't know somehow I missed or I, I need to scroll down and find them better. But anyway, here we go. This is what we're going to talk about. Um, we have a gentleman right in on our YouTube channel about wondering or no actually this came over facebook i think um wondering why he can buy a particular set of pickups that have have like real dynamics where when you adjust the tone knob or you adjust the volume knob you can really really um have a a very flexible pickup and why some of them it's just you know volume up down you know tone on off um and they don't do a whole lot uh, this is where, hmm, I don't like to use the word magic because all of this stuff is actually, you know, it's all science. But when we look at like a hand wound pickup, for instance, or a very high quality pickup, um, typically now there's many, many, many factors that go into this, but I'm going to talk about the main one that when I make pickups, I try to concentrate on. Okay. And that is, uh, the, unwanted capacitive loss that happens when you put two wires next to each other. Okay. So if you wind a coil very, very tight and very, very neat, then you're going to have more of this. And this means that your highs are going to go away, but not just the highs. It's also how reactive this thing is to voltage and resistance changes. Okay. So, we try to keep that as low as possible. And, you know, we hear these terms scatter winding and all this kind of stuff. And if you go back and look at some of our older podcasts, I think actually the first or second one we ever did, we talked about scatter winding. Um, but the, the long and the short of it is the way we actually put the wire on the, on the coil in my, this is just my opinion and my particular approach to how I do it. Uh, that is the number one factor to me. That and magnet selection versus coil winding. Um, we talked about, I think last week or the week before, we discussed how the output, it was the week before last, how the output of the magnet, how strong the magnet is, and how much winding is on the wire. Those are very interactive things. Uh, so those things are, you know, you always have to be adjusting them. But for the purpose of dynamics, if you will, um, basically, you know, you can have a, a pickup that's nice and crunchy and dirty and a lot of highs with a little bit of gain at 10. And then when you turn it down to about six or seven, it softens all up. Those highs start to come away. A lot of that has to do with the tone circuit in the guitar, but a lot of it, most of it has to do with honestly how the wire lays on the, on the, on the pickup, on the coil. Um, and we really try to concentrate on that. I really like to make sure because one of the th- other things that happens uh, with that is if you uh, have a pickup that's not very dynamic to volume and cha- and tone changes, the other thing that will also happen is you'll also have more muddiness as you add gain. So when you put more distortion or you stack a lot of effects on top of that pickup, then a lot of that clarity will start to go away. So it's not just about volume and tone control, but it also can be about the overall dynamics of the pickup itself, especially when we start to stack other stuff on top of it. So that actually kind of leads us into our other question because we have uh, another listener that asked us another question today or uh, over the last week or so. He was saying, 
you know, I got a tone control on my guitar. I got a tone control on my overdrive pedal. I got a tone control on another pedal. I got a tone control on my, um, my amp. He's like, how do I balance all these tone controls? Well, there's a couple of different things to think about here. Uh, now, obviously, tone controls are, don't let them be too confusing. Basically, um, there's a couple different types, and we're not going to get into super technical tone control stack styles and all that. But there's, there's two main types I want to talk about this evening. One of them is your passive tone control. That's like the one that's in your guitar, okay? So basically, that is more or less a filter, okay? And a tone control is always pretty much a filter. But a passive filter like what is in your guitar, which is just a tone knob, uh, I've said it many times that when you have a pickup that is wired directly to the output jack, and it is, that's it. That is the most potential electrically and really tonally, as long as the guitar is set up properly, that you can get out of that guitar. Pickup, output jack. And every time you add something in between there, the pickup and the output jack, you're going to start to filter through capacitance and resistance. So a tone knob is just a resistor that's variable with a filter capacitor. And all it does is it scrapes off some frequencies. Okay, it just takes some away. Many times... Well, all the time when it is a passive tone circuit, meaning one that doesn't have a preamp, one that doesn't have an active circuit in it, like, um, like an overdrive pedal where you could actually add bass in or take bass away. Um, that's the main thing I'm thinking of. Um, you're just taking things away. So unless it has a battery and a preamp and, or a, you know, like a buffer style circuit, which is basically what a lot of your pedals are. Um, it's just a passive thing that strips away. So when we talk about trying to balance all of this stuff, I want to talk about the next time. I actually want to do a whole, um, I'm going to do a video uh, probably. We'll talk about it in my podcast, but I want to do, it's hard to do it without visuals. I want to do a video on our YouTube show about stacking uh, gain and understanding what an overdrive pedal what an what an overdrive pedal, what a distortion pedal, what the over what the preamp and what the power amp do in your 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 guitar amp, and what your volume does when you turn your volume up and down and run it through all that stuff, because probably more concerning or more um, well more misunderstood is how to actually stack all that stuff or use it, so. Um, you know, we, we mostly know that when we turn our volume up on our guitar, we get more distortion or less distortion if we have an overdrive channel on our amp that's on. Um, but there's a reason for that. There's a technical reason for that, and that can actually play into our tones as well. So I want to talk about that in probably in a video, and I think we're going to draw some graphics and stuff because I want to show you exactly why and, and why... Um, when you turn your preamp way up, you get distortion and you turn your preamp way down and you don't get distortion. You turn your power amp way up and you do get distortion, but it's a different kind of distortion. You know, all that stuff. It gets real confusing if we don't understand how that stuff all stacks. So I'm actually going to do a separate video just for that. And I want to kind of lump that tone thing in with that a little bit because the dynamics of how we play can play a lot into that. But Main two things on that particular question, though, is passive versus active tone circuits. A passive one is always going to be taking s stuff out of the signal. It's always going to be taking a frequency away. Um, so if you have a capacitor and a, and a knob, which is what is in your guitar, then you're just going to be able to take stuff away. Um, if it is an active tone circuit with some sort of preamp, then there may be a way in there to actually add um, to it but it will also probably add some sort of gain as well. So uh, let's see. I had another person on YouTube ask me an interesting question about P90s because P90s have screws, right? They have, well, they have the six pole screws, uh, one for each string that adjust, 
but they also have two screws that go through the middle of it to hold it to the guitar. And somebody asked me, is it possible for those screws to end up acting as pole pieces? Because they take the same exact path as the pole piece screws do down through the middle of the coil between the magnets and up, you know, to the strings, they show to the strings. And the answer actually is yes. Um, if you use mild steel, uh, of any kind, uh, in order to attach your P90 to the guitar, the possibility is that you could create voltage by passing the strings over those two extra screws. I, as a rule, when we build P90s here, we ship them with stainless screws to take away from that problem. It's very, that's a very interesting question. Now, are you going to hear it? Um, I'm going to say that you probably will not hear that. Um, chances are you will not hear uh, that you will not hear that, that those two extra screws in there. Um, but it is a very interesting question nonetheless. Uh, let's see. And then here's another interesting one. And I would like to refer you to our YouTube channel. Again, Dylan pickups or youtube.com slash Dylan pickups. Sorry about this squeaky chair, by the way. Um, because someone, mm, We'll say it nicely and say someone more or less challenged me that eddy currents, which are the type of a current that when a flat surface is perpendicular to a magnetic field. So um, flat surface, well, I'll just say it again. A flat surface is perpendicular to a magnetic field. So for instance, a Telecaster bridge um, that if that material is non-ferrous, meaning it is non-magnetic, it cannot have eddy currents. This is absolutely false. Any flat metal that is within a magnetic field and perpendicular to this magnetic field can have eddy currents that can cause disruptions in the inductance of that magnetic field and coil, even aluminum. If you go to dylanpickups.com, or I apologize, if you go to youtube.com slash dylanpickups, we have two extensive videos that are a little bit long on eddy currents because it's a pretty complicated situation, but I do a very interesting piece on eddy currents with aluminum. And... I make a magnet stick to aluminum. So you need to go watch that because it's one of the coolest videos on the internet, in my opinion. So those are some questions that we had for this week. This was just kind of a little random thrown together thing of different questions that we saw from our viewers that listen and watch. I really, really, really appreciate it. This thing is really, really fun to do. And I love it when I don't have to think of anything to talk about. I love it when all of our listeners and viewers from YouTube and from SoundCloud, you know, this is available on SoundCloud also. SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Facebook, everywhere, you know, and everybody's just asking questions from every which direction. It is so much more fun because I don't need to think about con content. I need to know the stuff and need to learn it if I don't know it. And I need to call in experts if I do uh, need that also. Uh, but the fact that you all are wanting to be such a cool part of this community is so much fun. It's way more fun to me. So please check out guitartechgroup.com uh, and become part of our uh, become part of our community. We've got a group on Facebook that you I changed the security settings. There were some problems with that. I changed that. So now you can join and you can actually share uh, so that people can be part of guitartechgroup.com. Please share that link so that people can be part of that as well as dylantalkstone.com where you can go see all the other resources that you don't see in these uh, YouTube videos or in the audio podcasts. There's so much more there, dylantalkstone.com than what you're seeing right now. 
I really appreciate everybody being a part of it this week. My name is Dylan. This has been Dylan Talks Tone, and we will talk to you soon.